Hello, and welcome to another episode of Meet the Musicians with members of the Lacrosse Symphony Orchestra. My name is Jonathan Borja, and I play flute with the LSO. I also teach music history and flute at UWL. I have been playing with the LSO for the last two years, and most recently, I was fortunate enough to play in November's concert that featured Copland's Appalachian Spring, one of my all-time favorite works. What you just heard me play, however, is a section of a piece called Amatzinac by Mexican composer Jose Pablo Moncayo. This is one of the very first pieces I ever heard uh, performed live uh, when I was a teenager in Mexico City. So let me tell you a little bit about myself. I was born and raised in Mexico City and began playing flute when I was 15. I studied at the National Conservatory there, and then I came to the States where I studied uh, in Illinois, and then at the Conservatory of Music of the University of Missouri, Kansas City, where I earned my master's in flute, my master's in music history, and my doctorate in flute performance. I have been fortunate enough to play throughout the United States, Mexico, and recently performed and gave presentations in Singapore and in Belgium. Since this month's theme is international, it seemed appropriate for me to play this selection from Amat Sinak, as it is a work that I'm currently performing, but also researching. The name Amat Sinak is a word that comes from the ancient Aztec language Nahuatl, and it literally means paper river. It is the name then of a river just outside Mexico City, which runs between the two volcanoes just south of the city. Moncayo, the composer, was an avid mountaineer, and it is likely that he named the piece after visiting the area uh, during a hike. In this piece, Moncayo avoids the use of tonality. In other words, the, the piece is not in major or in minor. This is a very Western musical tradition thing to do. Instead, the piece is modal, which gives the piece a more universal appeal. Another appealing aspect of the piece is his choice of solo instrument, the flute. Not only because I'm a flutist, but also it is one of those instruments that, as we'll see next, uh, can be found pretty much everywhere around the world. So for instance, if we were to go to Asia, we would find a Chinese flute that may look like this. Or if we were to go to Japan, a flute like this. And in India, a flute like this. In the Middle East, we find the Nai, which is this very, very long flute. Uh, a little bit about this instrument. Uh, you can find it played uh, all over Northern Africa uh, and into Turkey, uh, but it's also used in the Sufi branch of Islam. It is used in ceremonies where they connect with Allah. And it is an instrument that because it uses the human breath, it is believed that directly connects with their God. In the American continent, we have flutes in the Native American tradition. These are the Native American flutes. And further south in Peru, we find the pan flutes. And this is uh, one from Peru that's falling apart. But you can see that we're used to seeing them with two rows. And, and the reason there's only one here is one of my favorite reasons, is that what happens is you buy the set of two in some parts of Peru. And uh, you, in order for you to play a melody, you have to play it with one of your friends. So you actually need to have that element of uh, connection with someone else to do this. To end, I will play for you a short piece for solo flute by the Danish composer Carl Nielsen. It is titled, The Children Are Playing. Thank you for joining us virtually this season, and hopefully we'll be able to meet again and make music together soon. <laughs>